Hey everybody, this is Chris with Caldar Craftworks and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a modern dresser with unique joinery, soft closed drawer slides, and continuous grain drawer fronts, all from my own home. And if you like what you're seeing, stick around and check it out. So for starters, every large sheet good job starts with breaking everything down to rough size on the track saw. And the whole idea behind that is just so I can have some manageable pieces when I take it over to the table saw. And as I just mentioned, I'm taking everything down to final dimensions here on the table saw and cutting all my panels. In the interest of efficiency, I'm clamping my panels side by side so that I can use the track saw to cut 45 degree miter corners all in one go. The track saw is definitely a luxury, but it's one that I'm thankful to have since it's deadly accurate and of course portable. I need a divider inside the carcass, so here I'm measuring out a stop dado on the insides of my top and bottom panel. Then I'm just setting up a bit of painter's tape which is going to get some CA glue as I build a plywood guide for the pattern bit on my router in order to do the stop dado. And as you can see I'm using a cutoff piece to make sure I nail the thickness perfectly for the dado and this dado is going to stop one inch from the front of the carcass. If you're liking this video so far, smash that like button for me, subscribe to the channel, and help me out by leaving a comment below. For more of my daily content, which includes a whole mess of shenanigans, check me out on Instagram and Twitter as well. And as you can see, using CA glue in between two layers of painter's tape makes for a really easy job of pulling off this plywood. With the test foot nice and secure, I'm going to use a chisel to knock out the rounded corners left by the pattern bit, and here I'm just using a marking knife to make sure all my lines are crisp. And here I'm just going to dry fit everything so that I can mark out where my domino mortises are going to be in the corners. For that, I like to use my DFM Toolworks small square and work from the inside of the carcass, also, these right angle setup blocks are extremely helpful and some spring clamps can just hold them in place. Now, of course, the domino isn't necessary for this build. Dowels or biscuits can work equally as well, but the huge advantage with the domino is that I can use either a wider mortise setting or actually drill a touch to the left and right of the receiving mortise to give me a bit of wiggle room for ease and alignment without losing strength from the floating tenons. It's gonna make this glue up go a lot smoother. And with the carcass dry fit again, I used a drywall square to figure out the overall length of the center divider in the carcass and cut that panel down on the table saw as well. I also cut some pieces to use as a backer, but left the center of the back panel open since this is going to be against a wall. I also marked out where all my dominoes were going to be and all the receiving mortises as well. Then there were more domino mortises cut. and some more. Before a final glue up, I wanted to edge band the plywood, so instead of using iron on edge banding, I'm gonna go with some scrap pine and ripped it into strips before gluing it to the panels on the front side of the carcass, leaving it a bit proud on the outside of the carcass itself.
This process actually took all of my homemade band clamps that I had in my arsenal, and I also then used some tight bond quick and thick to make sure everything was set into place. After the glue dried, I cut the ends with a Japanese pole saw to match the miter. I need to make some clamping blocks for the miter corners and here I'm just doing that out of a scrap 2x4 and making a few cuts on the table saw to create a clamping surface. I then went ahead and gave everything a nice light sanding and then got right into this ultimately very stressful glue up. If I could go back in time, I'd probably do the glue up in sections, but here I was feeling a little bit spicy and tried to just do everything at once and well, here we are. I also was trying to be really diligent about cleaning out squeeze out along the way, which ultimately did help me out on the back end of this build. I also really got to test my stretching ability right here when I left my mallet on the workbench. And somehow here, after marking over 30 mortars and tenons, I mismarked or miscut one. So to fix that, I just flush cut the domino out and used that little end piece to patch the mortise, which is going to get painted over anyway. After everything came out of the clamps, I flush trimmed the edge banding which I previously left proud, and then off camera did a quick sand which left me then with finishing the carcass. I'm going to go with paint and this water-based polyurethane for flooring. To make life easier, I'm going to prime the whole thing first. Again, hindsight is 20-20 and I probably could have used melamine ply or prime plywood to make my workload a lot lighter. I'm a fan of spraying these finishes and paints, so I just loaded up the gun and got to work. After applying that primer, it was literally just waiting for paint to dry in the shop before I could get to the actual paint and then the water-based polyurethane. And yes, the five second rule still applies if you've dropped your goldfish on the table saw. Now on to the base. I'm going with this six quarter white oak and I'm going to attempt the joint that I saw Tamar from 3x3 Custom do a video on a few weeks back. I'll have it linked up here in the corner so you can all get the detailed explanation as she's really already done the work in describing it. The issue that I ran into is that I've got five foot long stretchers and four of these joints to cut. Therefore, the small pieces were pretty painless, but the long boards became troublesome. The best way to describe this joint is that it's a hybrid between a lap joint and a bridle joint, and three of the pieces come together to form an extremely strong and sturdy corner. As you can see here, I attempted cutting one of the lap joints by hand. And honestly, that was a terrible idea and was kind of stupid, so I went back to the table saw afterward and got it done. 
And since I couldn't stand the five foot long boards up in my shop to hog out the material for the bridle joint portion, I set up a stop with the dado stack to get a lot of the material out, working the piece flat. The timeline here gets a little squirrely since I wasn't sure if the dado stack experiment was going to work. So with the single blade, you're gonna watch me define the edges of the bridle joint because I didn't feel like swapping the blade in and out constantly. And here you can see I'm left with a little pyramid of material at the seat of the joint. So I'm gonna take that out with a coping saw. This little pop at the end is my favorite. And then I broke out the chisels again and cleaned everything up and brought everything back down to my baseline. And then after a test fit, I went ahead and glued everything up. I also hit everything with a pretty heavy chamfer because I wanted to lighten the overall look of the base and it just kind of created a cool effect. I popped the grain with a wet rag and then sanded and card scraped after. I also broke out the domino again to do mortises for wood clips that I'll make later. I'm finishing with India ink because I want that contrast with the white carcass. If you think it's a sin to black and oak like this, then make your own and finish it how you want, but also feel free to tag me in your creation on Instagram. To make those wood clips I talked about earlier, I used some scrap white oak that I had. The process of these is pretty self-explanatory. You're once again going to cut another little lap of sorts and then just chop that up using a cross cut. To install, just stick the skinny end in your mortise and screw the top into your carcass. These are actually great for tabletops too. For the drawer slides, I made a couple spacers with scrap plywood to keep everything even and then screwed them into the carcass. These side mount drawer slides are finicky at best and these were no exception. I'm inclined to try some undermounts on a future build. If that's something you'd like to see, just let me know in the comments below. For the drawers themselves, I'm going to build them with a half-blind lock joint. My buddy John from Perilla Works, another South Florida guy, has a video on these that I've linked above. Check that out for a detailed explanation. I'm using pre-finished plywood and I'm going to leave the ply exposed for that more industrial modern feel. This joint is all about fence positioning and doing a thousand test cuts. Then once it's dialed in, it's pretty repeatable with an easy workflow. And here I'm just using the dado stack to cut a dado for the drawer bottoms, which is going to be this quarter inch ply. Then everything got glued up. Then all the drawers were mounted once dry. For the drawer fronts, I'm using more white oak. 
One of the boards had one hell of a hook in it, so I cut it to rough size and used hand planes to flatten before final sizing. I also used a block plane to hit everything with a small chamfer and then test fit on the carcass using this card game for spacing. For finish, I hit everything with a blend of boiled linseed oil, pure tongue oil, mineral spirits and wipe on poly in equal parts. To mount the drawer fronts, I'm using fast cap speed tape, which is a semi-permanent double stick tape. I use generous amounts before clamping the fronts on. I also pre-drilled and fired a screw into the back because, you know, belt and suspenders kind of guy. To attach the drawer pulls, I marked out my locations on blue tape. Don't mind the mismark. Then I went ahead and attached these black IKEA pulls that I found. And with the pulls on, I am done with this one. This was a pretty robust build for a box with legs. The base joinery as well as the drawer joinery took a lot of planning and test work to make sure everything came together correctly. The drawer slides took a lot of testing as well. The continuous grain fronts with the ombre coloring was a very nice unexpected touch. I'm pretty happy with this one, so I think I'm going to celebrate with a drink. As always, see you on the next one here at Cowdog Craftworks. Do you respect wood? I guess so. You guess so? You don't know if you respect wood? I had never thought about it before. I guess I do. Oh my god. <laughs> Thanks for watching.